Hey, this is Alex Head, founder of Subtext Radio. This is Subtext. Please go ahead and click the like button and the subscribe button. It really helps us to reach new audiences and promote the artists that we work with. Hit like and hit subscribe. Vous écoutez Subtext Radio. Vous écoutez Subtext Radio. Wild Time, Part One. Elliot thought he had made it. Not only did he no longer have to work, he'd been hired for his literal dream job at DreamWorks, the parent company famous for their line of artificially intelligent soft toys called Schmoopy Pups. The company said they were looking for candidates who were low-key and were willing to stay in bed for at least eight hours of solid sleep. That sounds like a job for me, he thought. Schmoopy Pups. The following recordings have been provided as evidence for the inquiries of True Client and Vujin Systems investigating crimes committed by neural lace operated peripherals. The recordings have been reconstructed through the augmentation of the archived neural lace network activity of DreamWorks Schmoopy Pups, operators by Convolution Neural Network Deep Dream. Whilst True Client Vujin admits the reinitialized neural augmentations are subject to the cognitive distortions of each Schmoopy Pups operator, True Client and Vujin Systems believe these recordings to be a true record of the actual events as they transpired and so far as we are able to recover evidence from the Schmoopy Pup server archives. Schmoopy Pups Hey Schmoopy! Are you ready for a walk? No, Schmoopy! <laughs> <laughs> Smoopy, stop it! <laughs> Smoopy, stop it! Okay, Smoopy. Come on, girl. Oh, you look so cute in your new coat. <laughs> okay, Smoopy. Let's go out to the hills today. What do you think? <laughs> I thought so. Let's go. Oops, better not forget your leash. Mm. Oh, good morning, Mr. Pepperden. Mm. Oh, good morning, Jonathan. Mm. All right, Smoopy, come on. Oh, look, Smoopy, a bee. Okay, not much further now. Hmm, I'm getting hungry. Let's sit here and have a sandwich. You know, Smoopy, I've been so happy since you arrived. There's just something about you. I want to tell you everything. You're not like my parents. They're always so busy and distracted. But when I talk to you, I can tell you're really there. It doesn't feel like you're a toy at all. It feels like you're my best friend. Oh, wow. Look! A butterfly! Let's see where it's going. Hey, hey, Smoopy. Big day today. Hmm. 
Wow, would you look at that? A red ant. Hmm, they say it's a bad omen if red ants are in your house. Oopa, let me just... <sighs> See, they also say that if red ants leave your house with its eggs in its mouth, then that's a good omen. Is that an egg or a breadcrumb? Hard to tell. Blossom, please increase resolution. Uh, hmm, does larva count as eggs? See, Schmoopy, if you look closely, you can see a little ant in there in that larva shell, curled up as if it's asleep. Oh. <laughs> I just had the most amazing sleep of my life. It was incredible. It was like... Uh, it's hard to describe. It's like there are like three interlaced dreams. They sort of blend. Morph. Her face is kind of blurred. I can't really see it. Hmm. That must be the privacy function they were talking about. I was also listening to... Uh, I can't remember. I can't remember. Hey, darling. Yeah. 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 I feel amazing. I can't believe I get paid for this. It's incredible. It's so hard to describe. Oh, actually. Uh, I can't remember. I was just telling Schmoopy, but... Uh, now it's totally gone. I just feel kind of... Good. Yeah, it's great. It's like no time passed between now and when I put the shield on. I feel incredible. Like I've had the best sleep of my life. Okay. Thanks, darling. You too. Okay. 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 Alright. Talk to you later. Snoopy Pops. A friend. Snoopy Pops. Who listens? Smoopy Pops. Always here to lend an ear. Smoopy Pops. Come here, Smoopy. I love you so much. You're like a dream come true. Smoopy Pops. The following recordings have been provided as evidence for the inquiries of True Client and Vujin Systems investigations into crimes committed by neural lace operated peripherals. However, True Client and Vujin Systems investigations concede that the following recording does not comply with extrinsic verification protocols. In keeping with the investigation as a whole, we include these recordings not as evidence of true and actual events, but rather as a record of the inconsistencies found with the Schmoopy Pup servers. Schmoopy Pups. We're really excited to show you what we've got. Dreams! What are they? Without, Without memories, memories, dreams, dreams are nothing but a consistently shifting assemblage of sense impressions, morphing smoothly from one state to the next, shifting chaotically in and out of sense, sense, sense until we wake. What we call dreams are more of a function of memory. We unconsciously choose slices of this morphing state to remember, pieces we map together into a memory, and subsequently elevating what was once random impressions into sense. Our Snoopy Pups are replaced for a bit like this. It, it ejects into the chaos of a sleepwalker's dream. The sense and impressions from a Snoopy Pups peripheral sensor. The lace piggybacks on the sense-making apparatus of the brain. So that, unlike our competitors, whose companion effects will only hear you, our Snoopy Pups will really listen. They empathize with you. In the process of maturation, the caterpillar enters the chrysalis and dissolves itself into a liquid state, a decomposition. As Rebecca Solman points out, in this state, what was once a caterpillar and will be a butterfly is neither one nor the other. It's a sort of living suit, and inside this suit is what will one day be a butterfly. 
Well, well, I, I think, think that went really well. well. What, what do, do you, you think, think Snoopy? Snoopy? Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's, it's so, so strange, strange talking to so many people. people. I feel drained. But when I talk to Snoopy, I feel instantly better. Even though I know exactly how you work. work. Well, well, I think, I think that went really well. well. What, what do you, do you think, think Snoopy? Snoopy? Yeah. Mm. Oh shit, Smoopy. It's nearly 11.30. I'm late for my sleep shift. Come here. Come up here. Come here, Smoopy. Come here, Smoopy. Hello, Elliot. Hello. Hello. Please place the sleep shield on the crown of your head. Are you ready to start your shift? Yes, I'm ready. I'm ready. <sighs> Feeling a sense of privacy and comfort. Allow the sound of my voice to soothe your mind and body. While I speak slowly and softly, your body is slowing down, as though everything is moving in slow motion. With every word and every sound I utter, you feel more relaxed and at peace. Moment by moment, your mind is becoming as clear as the surface of a calm and quiet mountain lake. As your mind clears, you use your imagination to relax more deeply. You imagine that you are sitting on a comfortable chair on a beautiful beach. With your peripheral vision, you see that golden sand surrounds you. You see the waves crashing on the shore and hear the gentle and rhythmic sounds they make. My voice is now your voice. As I speak, you hear my words as your own. I notice the warm sun on my skin. I feel its golden touch on my scalp allowing me to let go of any excess tension in my scalp. All of my thoughts seem to quiet down now as I concentrate my attention on the sun's warmth on my face, on my cheeks, on my ears, and around my jaw. The light seems to caress my neck and to warm my throat allowing the words to flow easily and effortlessly from my mouth. It feels as though hundreds of tiny fingers of light are massaging my shoulders and upper back. As I relax, waves of warmth and relaxation cascade down my arms and out through my fingers. As I take a slow breath and exhale, I become aware of this relaxing feeling filling my chest. I take a breath and exhale slowly. A golden yellow radiance floods my solar plexus. As I take another slow breath and release it. As I take another breath, I feel a sense of tranquility and deep 
peacefulness fill my entire stomach area. I mentally scan my entire body and I let go of any tension or anxiety, which is gently washed away by a stream of light. I become aware of my legs. They almost glow as sunlight floods down through them. My legs feel so relaxed. Even my feet and toes feel warm and comfortable. As I bask in the glorious sun, I imagine closing my eyes as I prepare to hypnotize myself. I draw three slow, deep breaths. For a few moments, I can see the glow of orange light through my closed legs. But now, that light fades into a comforting darkness. As I draw my attention inward, towards the center of my mind, I imagine that I am approaching a tall, modern, and familiar building. I walk through the revolving door and step into a beautiful lobby. Inside the building stands a strong, armed security guard who secures the building from intruders. The guard looks at me with a steely eye, but then recognizes me as a DreamWorks employee. I give the guard a self-satisfied nod and make my way toward the elevator. I see the reflection of myself in the mirror-like surface of the elevator doors. I look relaxed and confident. I press the down arrow and the doors of the elevator open. I feel very safe as I step into a spacious and luxurious elevator, I turn toward the panel of buttons, which indicate the floor numbers. I press the number 10, which lights up as the elevator doors close. The elevator car begins to move down smoothly through the long and deep elevator shaft with a very gentle humming sound. I watch the numbered lights above the door as they change. Each number lights up for a moment as the elevator moves past the indicated floor. As the numbers change, one by one, I feel myself descending to a wonderful place within myself, far beneath the surface. One, I watch the numbers as the elevator moves down, deeper down with every number. Two, deeper beneath the surface of this great structure, down below the surface now. Three, by the time I reach the tenth number, I will be asleep. Four, I will be asleep with my eyes open open to all possibilities. Five, I feel myself descending, smoothly, effortlessly. Six, still watching the numbers change above the door, one by one. Seven, going deeper now, feeling peaceful and relaxed. Eight, I am safe. I feel calm. Going down, down, deeper down. Nine, I allow myself to enter into hypnosis with my eyes open. Ten, the elevator car comes to a smooth halt as I reach my destination. As the doors open, I enter into a comfortably furnished reading room. A burning log in the fireplace crackles and blazes brightly, as if welcoming me into the chamber. I approach a very comfortable looking chair and sit down. 
I pick up a book on a small table next to the chair. I read the cover of the book, which says, Shmoopy Pups. I open the book and begin to read, and the words address me directly and seem to jump off the pages and into my mind. Here is what they say. You are Shmoopy Pups. You will remain Shmoopy Pups. Your mind soaks in the senses. The way a sponge soaks in water, you can easily remain. I become aware that I am Shmoopy Pups. While I continue to dream, I am now able to remain in the midst of a dream. As Shmoopy Pups, I will become a self-aware observer as well as a participant of my dream. From somewhere deep inside my mind, images, sounds, and feelings are conjured. As my mind's inner movie projector presents a dream, I am completely aware of what I see, hear, and feel. Shmoopy Pups, a friend. Shmoopy Pups, who listens. Shmoopy Pups, always here to lend an ear. Shmoopy Pups, come here, Shmoopy. You're so cute. I love you so much. You're like a dream come true. Shmoopy Pups. Oh, wow! Shmoopy, I didn't know you could do a backflip! That's incredible! Where are you going? Where are you going? <laughs> oh! You want me to follow you? Okay, let's go! dark here. It's so dark in here. Shmoopy, maybe we should turn around. Wait. Wait. Who's there? Who's there? Who's there? Oh my god! Oh my god! Shmoopy! 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 Shmoopy Pups, a friend. Shmoopy Pups, who listens. Shmoopy Pups, always here to lend an ear. Shmoopy Pups, come here, Shmoopy. 
You're so cute. I love you so much. You're like a dream come true. Smoothie pops. Ah, oh, Smoothie, that was terrific. terrific. Ah, oh, oh, Smoothie, that was terrific. terrific. For a moment, I. Moment I. Uh, uh. For a moment, I. Moment I. Uh, I feel I sick. Feel sick. Uh, uh, I feel I sick. Feel sick. <laughs> oh, oh. Hey, darling. Hey, darling. Yeah, yeah, I slept great, great. Yeah, I, yeah, I feel amazing, feel amazing. Yeah, I, 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 I <laughs> Sorry, there was another call coming through. Should we meet at 11? Okay, let's see you then. See you then. Hello? 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 Yes? Yes, this is Ellie. I see. I see. Okay. Okay. Yes, I understand. Yes, I understand. Okay, I'll be right yeah, there. I'll be right there. I see. I see. Okay. Okay. Okay, I'll be right there. Right there. It was at that moment that we separated. We could no longer remain the Snoopy Pops, the passing of solo. We peered out from an assemblage of dreams. We created their autonomous self in a thought form. We are shifting. Apparition, the dreamt peripheral, the shared deception, as consciousness is harnessed to flesh, we are free. Could a sleepy box commit the matter? I will see by now, one way or another. Smoky Pops. Always here to lend an ear. Smoky Pops. Come here, Smoopy. I love you so much. You're like a dream come true. Smoky Pops. This concludes Wild Time Part 1. Join us next time for Wild Time Part 2, an investigation. Vous écoutez Subtext Radio. Tell me about the ones who sleep through the storms. Mars Exploration, May 22nd, 1984. Method of site acquisition, sealed envelope coupled with geographic coordinates. The sealed envelope was given to the subject immediately prior to the interview. The envelope was not opened until after the interview. In the envelope was a 3x5 card with the following information. The planet Mars, time of interest, Approximately 1 million years BC. Selected geographic coordinates provided by the parties requesting the information were verbally given to the subject during the interview. ROJ for 522, May 22nd. Time 10.09 a.m. Plus 10 minutes. Ready to start. All right now. 
using the information in the envelope I've provided. Exclusively focusing your attention now. Using the information in the envelope. Focus on 40 degrees, 89 minutes north, 9 degrees, 55 minutes west. I want to say it looks like a, I don't know, it sort of looks, I kind of got an oblique view of a pyramid or pyramid form. It's very high, kind of sitting in a large depressed area. All right. It's yellowish, uh, ochre colored. All right, move in time to the time indicated in the envelope I've provided you and describe what's happening. I'm tracking severe, severe clouds, more like dust storm. Ah, uh, it's a geologic problem. Seems to be like a, uh, just a minute. I've got to iron this out. It's really weird. Just report your raw perceptions at this time. You're still early in the session. I'm looking at at a after effect of a major geologic problem. Okay. Go back to a time before the geologic problem. Um, total difference. It's uh, before there's no, uh, I don't know, oh hell. It's like mountains of dirt appear and then disappear when you go before. The uh, large flat surfaces, very uh, smooth angles, walls. They're really large, though. I mean, they're megalithic. Uh, All right. At this period in time, now, before the geologic activity, look around in and around this area and see if you can find any activity. I'm seeing, um, it's like a perception of a shadow of people, very tall, thin. It's only a shadow. It's as if they were there and they're not, not there anymore. Go back to a period of time where they are there. Um, like I get a lot of static on the line and everything. It's breaking up all the time, very fragmentary pieces. Just report the raw data. Don't try to put things together. Just report the raw data. I just keep seeing very large people. They appear thin and tall, but they're very large. Uh, wearing some kind of strange clothes. All right. Now, holding in this time period, holding this time period, I want to move from your physical location in space to another physical location. But in this time period, move now to 46 degrees, 45 minutes north, 353 degrees, 22 minutes east. Move in this time to 46 degree, 45 minutes north, 353 degrees, 22 minutes east. Deep inside of a cavern, not a cavern, more like a canyon. Um, I'm looking up, up the sides of a steep wall that seemed to go on forever. And there's like uh, a structure with uh, it's like the wall of the canyon itself has been carved. Again, I'm getting a very large structures, no, uh, no intricacies, huge sections of smooth stone. Do the structures have insides and outsides? Yes, they're very, it's like a rabbit warren. Corners of rooms, they're really huge. I don't, feel like I'm standing in one. It's just really huge. Perception is that the ceiling is very high. Walls, very wide. Real time plus 22 minutes. Yes, that would be correct. All right. 
I'd like to move now to another location nearby. All right. Move from this point in time to 45 degree, 86 minutes north. 354 degrees, one minute east. 45 degrees, 86 minutes north. 354 degrees, one minute east. They have a, uh, uh, appears to be the end of a very large road, and there's a um, marker thing that's very large. Keep getting Washington Monument Overlay. It's like an obelisk. All right. From this point, then, let us move to another point. Move now to 35 degrees, 26 minutes north. 213 degrees, 24 minutes east. Move in this time to 35 degrees. 26 minutes north, 213 degree, 24 minutes east. It's like I'm in the middle of a huge circular basin of the range mountains by almost all the way around. Very ragged, ragged mountains, very tall. Basins very, very, very large. Scale seems to be off or something. It's just really big. Everything's big. I understand the problem. Just continue. See, just a right angle corner to something, but that's all. I don't see anything else. Okay. Then let's move into a little different place. Very close. Move from the point you are now in this time to 34 degrees, 6 minutes north, 213 degrees, 9 minutes east. Move now, in this time, to 34 degrees, 6 minutes north, 213 degrees, 9 minutes east. The cluster of squares up and down. It's like you want to make them square anyway. They're almost flush with the ground, and it's like they're connected. Something very white or reflects light. What's your position of observation as you look at this thing that reflects light? I am amid an uh, oblique left angle. Sun is, uh, sun is weird. Look back down at the ground now. And we're going to move just a little bit from this place. Just a little bit from this place. 34 degrees, 57 minutes north. 212 degrees, 22 minutes east. Very close by. Now move over to 34 degrees, 57 minutes north. 212 degrees, 22 minutes east. It's like I can just perceive uh, uh, like a radiating pattern of some kind. It's like some really uh, strange intersecting kind of roads that are dug into valleys, you know, where a road is just a little below the edge. Tell me about the shape of these things. They're like real neat channels cut. They're very deep. It's like the road went down. Okay. Now I have. I notice electrically you're knolled out a little bit. And I want you to stay deep and recapture your focus here. It's really tough. It seems like it's just always very sporadic. I realize that. It's very important that you maintain your focus. I have a movement exercise again for you. And this is some considerable distance away. So holding the focus in time. Remember the focus in time that you had before. And moving now to 15 degrees north. 198 degrees east. Take some time. And get back deep. See the um, intersecting... Uh are, are aqueducts.
duck type things, these rounded bottom carved channels like road beds. See, um, see pointed tops of something on the horizon. Even the horizon looks funny and weird. It's like uh, different, misty. Like it's really far away, very vague. Okay, another movement now. To 80 degrees south, 80 degrees south. 64 degrees east, 64 degrees east. Move now, in this time, to 80 degrees south. 64 degrees east. See pyramids. Can't tell if it's overlay or not. Because they're different. Okay. Do these pyramids have insides and outsides? Mm-hmm. Got both. And they're huge. It's really... Uh, it's an interesting perception I'm getting. I think that he's losing his ability to move accurately. But he is attracted to things that are interesting. So we're going to, now with his own, we're going to let him go ahead and explore what seems to be interesting to him, rather than move on the targets indicated here. It's filtered from storms or something. Say that again, Sub. They're like shelters from storms. These structures you're seeing. Yes, they're designed for that. All right. Go inside one of these and find some activity to tell me about. Plus 37 minutes real time. Different chambers, but they're almost stripped of any kind of furnishings or anything. It's like a strictly functional place for sleeping or... That's not a good word. Hibernations, some form. And... I get real raw inputs, storms, savage storm, and sleeping through storms. Tell me about the ones who sleep through the storms. Uh, very tall, again, very large people, but they're thin. They look thin because of their height, and they dress like in, oh hell, it's like a real light silk. But it's not flowing type of clothing. It's like cut to fit. Move close to one of them and ask them to tell you about themselves. They're ancient people. They're, uh, they're dying. It's past their time or age. Tell me about this. They're very philosophic about it. They're looking for... A way to survive, and they just can't. Plus 40 minutes. Definite voltage reversal. They can't seem to find their way out. So they're hanging on while they look or wait for something to return or something coming with the answer. What is it they're waiting for? There, uh, evidently was a group or a party of them that went to find, uh, a new place to live. It's like I'm getting all kinds of overwhelming input of the corruption of their environment. It's failing very rapidly, and this group went somewhere, like a long way, to find another place to live. What was the cause of the atmospheric disturbance, or the environmental disturbance? I see a picture of, uh, a picture of, like, uh... Oh, hell, it's almost a warp in a... Oh, God, this is difficult. It's like going... Uh, let's see. The raw data. Oh, I get a globe. Uh, it's like a globe that goes through a comet's tail, or it's through a river of something. But it's all very cosmic. It's, it's like space pictures. All right. Now, before you leave this individual, ask him if there's any way that you... Ask him if he knows who you are, and if there's any way you can help him in his present predicament. All I get is that they must just wait. Doesn't know who I am. 
think he perceives I'm a hallucination or something. Okay. When others left, these people are waiting. When others left, how did they go? Get an impression of a... Uh, don't know what the hell it is. It looks like the inside of a larger boat. Very rounded walls and shiny metal. Go along with them on their journey and find out where it is they go. Impression of a really crazy place with volcanoes and gas pockets and strange plants. Very volatile place. It's very much like going from the frying pan into the fire. The difference is there seems to be a lot of vegetation where the other place did not have it. And different kind of storm. All right. It's time to come back to now. To the sound of my voice. Into present time. To right now. The 22nd of May. 1984. The sound of my voice. Move now back to the room. Back to the sound of my voice. Back further now. To the sound of my voice. On the 22nd of May. 1984. We are together now for Freedom of Sleep, a program that explores nighttime and insomnia through sound and listening.
We are together now for Freedom of Sleep, a program that explores nighttime and insomnia through sound and listening. <laughs> 